Professor Orgelis, we just got done changing the ellipse radius. We are now going to look at moving objects on the display. Right now I'm using magnitudes, the range is from zero to negative 60, so I have an offset of 70. That way the radius doesn't become too small. We're also going to take a look at how we can use magnitudes to move the objects on the display. If I want to move an object up or down, we need to think about how graphics work on a computer. So on this display, the top left corner is going to be zero, zero. So here is zero, zero on my display. And the Y axis is going to be vertical. And the X axis is going to be horizontal, just like a graph. However, zero, zero is here. And if I increase Y, the value is going to move down. If I increase X, the value is going to move right. If I decrease X, it's going to move left. If I decrease Y, it's going to move up. And that's how the display works on a computer and JavaFX. Most graphical interfaces work that way. Zero, zero will be the top left corner, and then you move throughout the display. Now, if you want to talk about the Z axis, if you get into 3D effects, the Z axis will be coming towards the user. So you can think about a axis pointing straight towards you, if you increase Z, it's going to come towards the user out of the screen. If you decrease Z, it's going to go into the screen away from the user. And that's how the graphics will work on this display. Now, I want to move ellipse one. So I want to move ellipse one up and down. So I have ellipse one. And let's see what methods we have. So you can scroll through. We have quite a few methods for an ellipse. You'll see I have center X, center Y, get center X, get center Y. The bold methods are usually ones that you'll want to use, although you could use others. Here's radius, which is what we used. You keep scrolling down. You'll see event listeners. You'll see set center X and set center Y, which are bold. Okay, and we have a bunch of other listeners. We have radius X, radius Y, which is what we used to string. So if I want to move the ellipse up and down, X will move it horizontally. Y will move it vertically. So I'm going to use set center Y. And I'm just going to put magnitudes in there directly. So I'm going to say magnitudes zero. Okay, and let's see what we have happening. So if I look at this display, click play. You'll see the size is growing, but the magnitudes is not moving much. Okay, so the center of the object is not moving much. Okay, it's at negative 17, negative 20. But you see, not much is happening. It did move a little bit. Now remember, I said if you have Y as a negative value, it's going to move up. Y as a positive value is going to move down. So now let's just see if we multiply this by five. So if I multiply this by five, let's get a little bit more action happening. So I'll rerun the program. You'll see every update that I make, I need to rerun, recompile. If I click play, Okay, now you'll see a lot of action. So I have magnitudes is moving up because it's a negative value. And we can actually see a lot of action happening. Now, if I switch this, so let's say I were to do the absolute value. If I do the absolute value of magnitudes and then multiply it by five, let's see what happens. Okay, so a lot of these algorithms that I've come up with are a lot of trial and error. Run the default value, see what happens to the display, think about why it's happening, and then update the display to make the changes that you want and make the effects that you want to happen. So if I have the absolute value, you're going to see it moves down. When Y increases in value, it's going to move down. When Y decreases in value, it's going to move up because this is zero, zero up in the top left corner. If I add on to Y, it's going to move down. If I add on to X, it's going to move right. Decrease X is going to move left. Decrease Y, it's going to move up. Now I can use the absolute value because that makes a little bit more sense. I'm going to add either 0 or 60 to the value and multiply it by 5, so that's 300. But you'll notice when the object's moving, okay, you'll notice when the object's moving, it's not in its original position. It goes to a new position and moves up and down from there. So I need to normalize this value. So magnitudes is from zero to negative 60, and now I'm taking the absolute value of it. So it's gonna be from zero to positive 60, and I'm gonna multiply it by five. 
So either I'm going to have 0 as the smallest value or 60 times 5, which is 300. So if I want to try to keep its original position and then move accordingly, I need to normalize this value. Now, multiplication will usually happen first, but I recommend that you put parentheses here to ensure that the order of operations happens first. So I'm going to multiply first and then subtract 300. So let's see what happens here. Run the program. Okay, now you'll see that object is a little bit more normalized. It's going to start from its original position, and the maximum value would be 60 times 5, which is 300. So if it's 300, in fact, it's going to be 0. So it's going to be at the original position. Now, if it's going to be zero here, I'm going to move up 300 from its original position. So I'm going to set the center to negative 300. So I'm trying to normalize this value. And this is the final formula that I came up with. You see it's similar to just multiplying by five. So if I run this program, okay, you'll see the objects up there. And be careful, if that circle goes in front of the pause button, I won't be able to click the pause button. So you want to make sure your buttons are on top of the display, just like we did in the stopwatch. So here's where the circle is. If I take this out and just multiply by 5, the original value, take out this bracket, it's almost the same because magnitudes would be from 0 to negative 60. Okay, so now if I multiply by 0, it will be 0. If I multiply by 5, it will be negative 300, which is essentially what we had before. However, you'll see a slight difference here. Okay, you almost see the circle uh, radius is increasing from the top and moving down. Okay, where as with I normalize the value, you're not going to see much difference on this one ellipse, but you will notice a difference when we include all the ellipses. So let me run this again. So what you can do. And you'll notice the magnitudes at the higher decibels are not activated as much. So if I normalize those values, even though they're not being activated as much, I can still make them have a greater effect. In this case, you'll see the circle, instead of increasing the radius downward, it's almost increasing the radius upward. It's kind of hard to explain, but if you watch closely, you'll see there is a difference between these two formulas. And I decided to finalize with this formula. Okay, now you can pick which formulas you'd like. There's a lot of trial and error to see what effects you want to take place. Right now, I'm going to leave the negative 300 there, although I could change it in such a way where even though the high decibels are not activated, I can still get a lot of movement on the display. So maybe this magnitude is being activated quite a bit, so I multiply it by 5. This one's being activated less, so maybe I multiply it by 6 or 7. Then maybe this one's activated even less, so I multiply it by 10. And maybe I multiply this one by 15. Okay, so I can normalize it and change the values in such a way where even though these magnitudes are not being activated, I can still have them update the display and have a cool effect. So here's my final algorithm for moving the items. You'll see they start in their original position because I'm normalizing the value. And if there's some activation, they're going to move up. And the radius will increase in size upward versus downward in the previous example. So you'll see this one's not being activated as much because it's a very high decibel. So I can change that. Maybe here I multiply by 15. And here I also need to increase my normalization factor. So this would be 60 multiplied by 15, okay, which could be up to 900. So I can change my normalization and make sure it stays within a certain range. Okay, let's see what we have. So you see I get a little bit more activation on the red. I could even multiply it greater. So maybe I multiply it by 20 or 50, depending on what you want to happen in the display. Let me try to multiply this by 150. I've also seen students use the lower magnitudes for the right-hand side of the display. So instead of using 0, 1, 2, 3, they would use 0, 1, 1, 0, okay, depending on what effects you're trying to 
make happen. So let's play. So see, if I don't normalize, the red goes so high, it goes off the screen. So if I have 60 multiplied by 150, the upward bound could be up to 9,000. So if I normalize it, let's see if I can get that back down and up on the display. That may be too large of a value for this display. If I play, okay, now I get a lot of action on the right-hand side, but I need to normalize it to make sure it stays in its original position. That may not be the best term to call it normalizing it, but conceptually, it's the same. Okay, so I want it to start in its same position, but move depending on this value here. I have more to show you. Stick with Professor Wergley's. We'll see you in the next video.